Whether delicate perched on a cattail no hovering over a pond, dragonflies are a sure sign of summer. They went star ancestors call out of the water and witness the rise and fall of the dinosaurs. They flown over lakes and rivers for the last 330 million years. With is the secret of their extraordinary success. The secret of their survival lies perhaps in the ecological niche that dragonflies occupy. Dragonflies are intimately connected with freshwater ecosystems and its strategies and adaptations. Big dragonflies look like marauding fighter planes, they patrol their terriery at more than 50 km per hour. They hover like a helicopter and dart off at top speed from a standing start they beat their wings so slowly only about 30 flaps a second. But but that's only part of this story the real reason for their long reign over planet earth can be found in their daily lives in behavior as complex as that of many mammals and birds yet normally unseen. As we embark on this enchaining journey into the world of dragonflies, we will uncover their incredible life. Ancient Origins Insane Architecture Aerial Acrobats and so on. So let's spend the entire summer by this particular lake and watch closely. The little creatures really do have the biggest stories to tell in the world of dragonflies. Dragonflies lead a surprisingly complex life. Perhaps it is because they are completely at home in two worlds. Below the surface of water their larvae are deadly hunters and when they've entered their fill and grown to full size they call out of the lake. Change their shape and take to the air. After less than a mouth in a total lifespan that may be two to three years for the majority of their life a dragonfly exists as a nymph a fully aquatic predator superbly adapted to exploit the abundance of food available in freshwater ecosystems. Dragonflies eggs hatch into larvae and emperor larvae are killers, let hell emperors. Damselfly larvae are right up there at the top of their menu, those sharp eyes sport any movement and the emperor larvae stalks its lunch like a tiny panther. Its eyes are huge and both face forward, so the larvae has a stereo vision, it can judge its distance from a target very precisely laughs and when it's close enough it deploys, its secret weapon. Jaws that can shoot out on additional half length of its body a long range strike capability that for the damselfly's larvae comes out of nowhere the jaws snap shut and the damselfly is impaled on sharp spines. To be hauled in and chopped up by a pair of serrated blabs before being swallowed foreign. Don't feel too sorry for the damselfly, they also are killers and use the same tricks as the bigger dravens just on smaller prey. Water hog lice slow moving abundant the perfect meal for a growing damselfly larvae. The battlefield under the surface of a water is no place for the faint herot. After two and a half years living below the surface. The underwater battle are end. The nymph is ready to undertake a final malt that will see it leaving its aquatic home and embarking on a final journey to pass on its games to the next generation. Just before dawn on a warm July day the nymph climbs up a reed stem and sits motionless. A few minutes later the carapace above the thorax begins to split and the dragonfly begging to ease itself out of the nymph exoskeleton. The dragonfly waits as its legs harder enough for it to support itself.
As it reorients itself and begins the slow process of unfolding its wings, the dragonfly flexes. Strecking the still supple exoskeleton steadily elongating and expanding to reach its full adult size. Once the wings are fully extended the powerful muscles in the dragon's thorax reorient the wings into their final horizontal position. The dragonfly is now almost ready to take its maiden flight. All dragonflies are tour master of the air they can hover rock steady. They can fly backwards and turn on a dime. Like a real airbender. All these extreme aerobatics depend on very sophisticated wings. Wings that have corrugations for strength and complex patterns of veins that allow each wing to change its flapping ankle independently in flight. Dragonflies are found on all continents. For their super flying skills are astonishing. At the end of the Middle Ages humans set out to discover new continents, dragonflies were way ahead of them. Dragonflies are everywhere. Some have been found in mid-ocean 550 kilometers from island. Dragonflies have something vital in common with human civilization both depend on fresh water. This ancient civilization flourished thanks to the River Nile. Riverside papyrus marshes have owls offered a home to dragonflies. The ancient Egyptian worshipped their gods in the form of animals, insects also played an important role for them 3,400 years ago. They immortalized dragonflies in their tongs. We humans have 4 million years of history. We know so little about it. The small dragonflies are 80 times as old as we. In those distant times there was just one single supercontinent, Pangaea. In the Carboniferous Fern and Club Moss trees jungles contained relatively few animal species. It the age of insects. This is Arthopleura, measuring up to 10 feet. This long lost coison of the centerpiece was a herbivore. But the fern forest concealed other giants the ancestors of today's dragonflies. The insane predator Meganura, member of the dragonfly family is the largest known flying insect ever discovered. With a wingspan up to 70 centimeter. It had no airborne competitors at the time, since birds and other flying reptiles didn't exist yet. Its head was independently from the rest of its exoskeleton, so it could keep it still while flying and focus on its prey. These are creatures that have hardly changed in hundreds of million of years, from the very beginning they have been perfect sky hunters. Their body design makes them perfect predators 330 million years of evolution have given them the tools to devour any insect's prey. The legs are rarely used for walking but are used to catch and hold prey, for perching, and for climbing on plants. Hunt anything they can overpower that includes flies, wasps, butterflies, even their own species.
Hovering near bitties of water with beautiful wings and huge compound eyes, the dragonfly their hunting success rate pushes a 90 to 95%. It's not just the wings or the eyes that make the dragonfly so successful but the dragonfly's brain uses a highly optimized hunting strategy that allows it to predict where the prey is going and to quickly main over to intercept it studying raptors and other hunting insects has shown that there are two main strategies used by predators to chase down their prey. Tracking and interception and of the two ways to hunt. Interception is the far more difficult one. Tracking involves maintaining the target in the same spot in their field of vision and accelerating towards them. The dragonfly approaches and spirals in towards the prey until its natural advantage in speed allows them to snag. The other form of hunting is known as interception where the dragons fly in an intercepting path towards where they predict the prey will be this is more difficult as the tacations and speeds of the prey and predator must be precessed together to make such a predictor. However it predicted accurately it's less likely to depend on an absolute speed advantage which can help the predator. To save power as fast forward flight and acceleration is energetically taxing and ever though dragonflies have the speed and agility to be able to engage. In tracking it they so desired they primarily use interception as a form of caature in humans interception is a learned behavior but in dragonfly it's hypothesized that such behavior must be handweed into their nervous system linking their visual system and flying system directly. Mostly unchanged through time their size on the other hand has changed dramatically the ancient dragonflies were giant compared to the ones that exist today. But insects and other arthropods weren't always so small. About 330 million years ago, they were not only abundant. They were enormous to meet the biggest invertebrates to ever crawl across the earth. We have to go back to the history in the Carboniferous period, from 298 million to 358 million years ago. That's when you'd find the likes of Meganura, it was a griffin fly, a giant relative of today's dragonflies. That had a wingspan of about 70 centimeters. That's about the size of a pigeon more than three times larger than the biggest living dragonfly. Why did evolution push them to hunt small prey? Why couldn't they remain 70 centimeter giants dominating the skies and snatching up bigger prey? There are two leading hypotheses for the miniaturization of dragonflies and they're not mutually exclusive. First we known what allowed these invertebrates to get so big. This time there was much more oxygen in the atmosphere it's thought that this huge amount of oxygen was able to support larger insect bodies which rely on passive and active diffusion through holes in their cuticle of respiration. As those oxygen levels decreased to those of the present day, so did the maximum size an insects could reach. The other hypothesis is that small flying dinosaurs and birds which began evolving 150 million years ago may have outcompeted larger dragonflies for the same ecological reach since there is less competition at birds hunt larger organisms. And dragonflies. Hunt smaller, onk smaller dragonflies were more likely to not go extinct there are very few insects more successful than the dragonfly, who have remained relatively unchanged for hundreds of million of years. In the spring sunshine a profusion of dragonflies, they perch close to the water ready to dart into the air and drive away a rival or grad a passing female mating only lasts a few seconds. Before they break apart and the female heads for margins of the pond where, she will begin laying almost immediately dippling the tip of her abdomen in the water and scattering her eggs. While the female lays her eggs the male hovers close by to prevent her from being grabbed dead by another male before she's finished of depoiting. There's on time for sentimentality here and this female will mate with many males and lay many hundreds of eggs in the few short weeks of her adult life. After fertilization the females become almost secretive searching for suitable locations to lay their eggs in the marginal vegetation at the edge of the pond. This female appears to be concentrating intently. 
As she places individual eggs into the rotting stems and vegetation, the females lay in a wide variety of locations. Maximizing the chances that some of these eggs will hatch successful. It may seem somewhat random but it's worth remembering that this pattern of behavior is tried and teched through countless generations. October the pools that went alive with dragonfly a few weeks before and now quiet. Autumn brings the stories of all dragonflies to be close. The old dragonflies still remains but the fae that have lasted this long will some succumb and either fall into the water or fall prey to another predators looking for a meal. It's the end of the dragonfly's greeting season. But down below the surface of the pond, there are dragons alive and well and looking for a meal. So the next time you see a dragonfly flying around your local pond remember to take a moment to appreciate this killer in the sky and its enduring success as a species. Its behavior and life cycles are equally crucial not only do dragonflies dominate the skis but their larvae are deadly hunters under the water. They have done for the last 330 million years. Hmm. Hi. Hmm. 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 Hmm.